Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Tech Tutor. In one of my previous videos, I showed you how to set up a React Spring app to log in with Google. So React was the front end and Java Spring was the back end. And today I want to show you how you can go ahead and launch that app for free using Heroku. So this is going to allow you to create your app, launch it for others to see, and you can showcase it to your friends and you don't have to spend a dime. So let's go ahead and jump into the code now. All right, so last time I showed you how to launch an app that is going to allow you to do Google logins. It had a Mongo database and it also used React for the front end and Java for the back end. So I'm gonna show you today how you can actually deploy all this for free. You're gonna to go to this website and at this website for MongoDB, this will allow you to create a free MongoDB uh, to use for your site. So that way, uh, you know, your site can be deployed. So if you don't have an account with this website, just go ahead, click sign up, and then you can use your Google account to uh, create an account, or you could always sign up with just any email, but I like to just use the uh, Google uh, SSO to create my account. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into mine. And so I had already uh, logged in before, so that's why it remembers that this is one of the accounts I wanna use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my Tech Tutor account. All right, now that I'm logged in, basically if you are new to this uh, site, basically it's gonna ask you to create an organization and create a project. So my organization I just called Tech Tutor and the project I called React Login. It'll kind of already guide you through the steps to create these. If you have questions on this, just let me know. It should be pretty straightforward. But after you have your organization and your project, you're going to then click this button to create your cluster. And then we're gonna do the shared cluster because again, this is a way that I'm showing you how to do all of this for free, just so that way you can test out your code and showcase to others, maybe the site you've been working on. Eventually, if you're gonna actually have some real production, you're gonna wanna obviously pay for the better clusters that are gonna have more stability. So we'll go ahead and click the create cluster on the free version. You can choose a different provider. Uh, usually I just use the AWS provider, so that's what I'm going to do here. And then you can pick a region as well. I'd probably suggest, you know, pick a region where you're at. So I also just prefer the US West 2 region, so I'm going to use that one. I'm going to leave all these other settings because, again, this is just for showcasing how to get started. And then click Create Cluster. So this will take a few minutes to provision, and after it's done provisioning, I will show you how to get your connection information that you're gonna need once you go to deploy your uh, Java server. All right, now that the cluster has been provisioned, we're gonna go ahead and get our connection information. So click connect. And then you're going to need to set a connection IP address. You could be more secure with this, but just for simplicity, we're gonna allow access from anywhere and then click add IP address. So then I'm going to create a user. I will call mine tech tutor. And then I already just generated some password. So you're gonna put your password here and then create the database user. And I'm just not going to save this into Firefox. And now you're going to choose a connection method. Over here, do connect your application. We're gonna use Java. Just go ahead and do 4.1 or later. And this is your connection string that you will be using. So you're going to put the user and then that password that you created. And then this gives you the cluster information as well as what they're calling the database name. And then again, some more information. So you can obviously kind of customize this a little bit more uh, by changing your database name and everything. Uh, but again, just for simplicity to get you started, let's just go ahead and use what we have. So you can actually just click this copy button to get your connection string. And then we'll go ahead and click close. So now we have a connection string to connect to this database. Let's go ahead and actually start uh, launching everything on Heroku. So Heroku is what we're going to be using to launch our front end and our back end. And so the way I have done this that's going to make it easier is I have already added my front end and back end code into GitHub because you can launch from your GitHub uh, repository for both of these. So that GitHub link will be in my description. I suggest taking a look at that, so that way you have the front end and back end code. Again, I also went through a lot of this code in the previous video, 
So if you have any questions on that, either ask me here or take a look at the previous video and hopefully that'll answer some of your questions. All right, now let's go ahead and head over to Heroku so we can deploy our Java server. So over here, if you have an account, you can log in. Otherwise, I'm going to sign up for an account. And here you just enter this minimum information, which I'll go ahead and enter and then I will uh, show the next screen after I'm done with this. So it's going to then prompt you to check your email to confirm your account. So go ahead and do that. Once you have gone ahead and confirmed your email, it's also going to have you prompt to create a uh, password. So go ahead and create your password. And then once you're done, you're gonna then log into your account. After you log in, it'll prompt you to set uh, multi-factor if you would like to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that for now. And then go ahead, you know, read over this information. I'm not domiciled in Italy, so that's not a problem. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and accept. And now we're going to create a new app. So this is how we're going to, again, create our Java app first. So go ahead, click create a new app. I'm going to go ahead and just call this Java login. And that's available. So this does have to be a unique name. Um, you know, if it's taken, just create something that works for you. And now here's the part that I was talking about that makes it a little easier. So you can connect it to GitHub and this will allow you to deploy from GitHub. Uh, if you don't wanna do this, you can use the Heroku uh, command line interface and that'll allow you to, you know, kind of deploy from command line. So it's really up to you. I'm just for ease of use, I'm going to go ahead and use my GitHub. And then you're going to connect to your GitHub And then mine's already connected. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and authorize access to Heroku. And then we're going to search for the repo that I'd like to connect to. For this particular project that we're going to deploy, we're going to use login Java. And then you can enable automatic deployments if you'd like. You can also deploy it manually. Uh, I'll go ahead and just enable automatic deployments. Basically what this will do is anytime you uh, make changes to the branch in question, it'll automatically deploy those changes. Uh, you know, you can configure this, it's up to you. Now that those are enabled, we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit more configuration that we need. So we're going to go over to the settings. Over here, we're going to wanna to reveal the configuration variables. And there are two that I'm going to want to add. So I'm going to want to add the URI for connecting to the Mongo database. So spring.data.mongodb.uri. And then that connection string that we had earlier. So I have that ready. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that here. The only thing is that you're gonna to wanna to put that password that you created for this one in place of that password spot. So I'll go ahead and take the uh, garbage password that I made for this, pop that in there, click add. And then after that, you do need one more value. So you're gonna want to set the uh, Spring OAuth client for the Google client. So there was a secret. I showed that in the other video, how you are generating that secret. So just take that secret value that you had there and pop it in here. So I'll go ahead and put the one for mine and click add. And then you're also going to want to add a build pack because we want it to know how to actually build our Java code. All right, so go ahead and just select the Java build pack and click save changes. Now we'll know how to deploy it. And then after that, all you gotta do now is go back to deploy and then click deploy branch. You should see all this build information coming through. So it's running the Maven uh, commands, compiling the code, and then it should build successfully. All right, and you can see now that it has successfully deployed this app, and this is the location to the app. So you're going to want to use that location and uh, some configurations in a bit here. So in the meantime, 
I want to also show you one thing that had changed. So if you watched the previous video and I walked through the Java code, there is one thing you need to make sure you add. So that way Heroku knows which version of Java you're using. Otherwise you will have problems. Over here in my project in IntelliJ, the system dot properties file here, Java runtime dot version equals 11. This is important because again, if you don't add this, Heroku will most likely default to a version that is not compatible with what you have unless they update theirs to default to 11. So I would suggest adding this just to make sure everything works. All right, let's go ahead and go back to Heroku. And now we're going to go ahead and set up our node project here. So we'll go ahead and open up another tab. And now from here, we're gonna click new and create new app. And then this one, let's see if, uh, what, what, what I can pick here that's not already taken. So I'll just call it react-login. Might already be taken. Yeah, let's try react-login tech. Okay, so go ahead, click create app. And we're going to pause this for a moment and come back to it. So we're gonna wanna also push our code to GitHub as well. But before you can push to GitHub, there's some configurations you should do in the node project. So again, I'm gonna put a link to my node project for reference, but I'm gonna show you what we're changing so that way you can change it too before you actually deploy yours. So go ahead and go to VS Code or whatever editor you'd like to use to edit the client code. All right, over here in the client, I've already added the extra pieces that you might need for dependencies for Heroku to properly deploy your node project. And also uh, there's some information here to tell it which scripts to run for the post build. Then the other important part here, this is the part that you're going to wanna to change. Over here, there is a redirect URI and our base URL. So you need to set these to the values of the uh, Heroku URLs that exist. So your client one will be your node project and your API base URL will be your Java project. So let's go ahead and go grab those now. Over in the Java project, uh, you can click open app. This will actually give you your URL and you can just go ahead and kind of snag this from here. Go back, add it. this as your base URL. And you can kind of already see the pattern. So basically what it is, is the name of your app, .herokuapp.com. So I can actually go ahead and just manually put what this other one is. I just need to go take a peek at what my name of my app was. So it was React Login Tech. So back over here, put React Login Tech here. And now we're good to go. That's the only change you need to make. So then after this, you're gonna go ahead and push it to your GitHub or however you wanna launch it. You know, if you wanna use the CLI, it's up to you, but you need to make this change first. And now you are ready to go for your React. All right, now let's go back over to Heroku. From here, let's go ahead and complete our process. So let's go ahead first go over to settings. We're gonna go ahead and just set our build pack first this time and our config variables if we needed any, but we don't need any for this particular one. So we're just going to set our build pack. The one that I find works best for the React app is actually this one right here. I'll put this in the description for reference as well. I prefer this one over the one that they have here for Node.js. It just seems to work better. I've had some issues with the one that they have. Go ahead and click save changes. All right, that's it for that. And now go back to deploy. You're gonna do that GitHub connection again. Now I'm gonna search for my repo and mine will be the login react. Now that's connected, I can enable automatic deployments and I'll just go ahead and deploy my branch now. All right, so now after it has shown that it is successfully deployed, this will take a while actually. So, you know, you can walk away and come back, but I've already went ahead and edited that out for you. So now we're going to go ahead and do one other thing as well. So if you've seen in the other video, we set up the Google client by logging into uh, Google's website. You're gonna wanna go over there and configure your authorized URLs. So go ahead and go to console.cloud.google.com slash API slash credentials. For me, this redirects to uh, what I've already created in the previous video. So 
If you're unfamiliar with what I have here, I suggest going to the other video so that way you can see how exactly I set this up. We're gonna go ahead and click that web client that I had set up. And over here, these are the authorized redirect URLs. So basically I had already set up the ones to show localhost in the other video. And then I went ahead and just had placeholders here for me setting up for this video to showcase how you could do this here. So you're gonna to wanna to change your client and your server here. So you're gonna to wanna to put these URLs in here based on what was your Heroku URLs. So first let's go ahead and replace the client. So the client is going to be that React login tech. Go ahead and just take that value. So then we're gonna do that dot Heroku app dot com slash OAuth2 slash redirect. Make sure you have HTTPS as well because it's going to use that for your URL on Heroku. And then you're gonna to wanna to also take your Java server URL. So for this one, it's just Java login for me. And so then I'm going to change this test value out that I just had. So now Java login dot com slash OAuth2 slash callback slash Google. Go ahead and click save. After you've done that, now the redirect process should actually work. If you did not do that, it's not going to properly redirect to your Heroku uh, website, so your login is actually going to fail. Now go over to the React client. Scroll down here, you can actually click View. This will open up your React app. And now you can see, hey, it looks very similar to what I showed in the other video when you were running it locally, but now it's actually running on Heroku's website. So now you have your own URL you can send to your friends, have them try it out, you know, showcase what you've done. Go ahead and click login. And then you can use that Google login we used before. After you click login, it's possible you see an error like this. So if something like this happens, uh, you probably wanna check to make sure that you actually whitelisted your URL properly. I may have made a mistake here, or sometimes it just takes a little while for Google to actually update your whitelisted URIs. So give it a few minutes and try again if it doesn't work. And if you still have issues, then there could be some other issue that you need to investigate. So we'll give this a few minutes. I think that's all this is, is that it's just taking a little while for Google to actually register our whitelisted URLs. After some research, I actually realized that I forgot to set a few values. So this is something that you'll have to figure out sometimes is that you are missing some uh, setup. So then go ahead here. We're gonna actually add a few more properties to our Java project. So we wanna do the authorized redirect URLs. And so again, for this one, it is going to be basically the URL to your clients. So we can actually go ahead and grab our authorized redirect URL from our Google settings. So uh, this react login dash tech Roku app. So go ahead, come back to our uh, Java settings here, paste that there. And now we also need to set a couple more values. So add that one. We'll just set some sort of expiration time for our app token and you can set any app token secret. So uh, you can use whatever value here. This is just a secret that's going to be stored on your Java server. I suggest obviously not sharing this once you uh, have something legitimate out there. And that will just about cover it. So everything that we have that we need is here. So let's go ahead and redeploy. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and try again to log in. And there you go. Now you see that it actually worked. Everything is now set up. I'm able to run my uh, login server plus the client on Heroku. This is great because again, this gives you a way to showcase to others what you've done or if you ever wanted to just launch some project that you have, you want to see how it works, see if it's popular, let people try it out. This gives you a way to do that. So everything is up and working now and that's it. That's basically all you need to do to deploy what we did in the other video for free. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you like it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If there's any videos you'd like to see, let me know in the comments what ideas you have and I'll try to research that for you as well. And please take a moment to like and subscribe for future videos.